Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to this Zoom session. My name is Huey Ho, a volunteer conducting IT classes in library at Harbourfront. At this moment, we have converted these classes to Zoom online. For those who have attended this morning session on volunteerism, thank you for your support for coming back again. Now, this uh, Zoom cloud storage lesson, the notes are in my blog. Normally, I post my notes a few days before the event. So for this one, I think I post it on a Monday, uh, on a Monday because the, the talk is on Thursday. So roughly there's a time. So for those who want a copy of these notes, it's very simple. You just go to the blog, go to the right bottom corner, you will find the word follow or follower. Click on it and just submit your email address. What happened is subsequent posts I make for this lesson, you automatically will get a soft copy in your email account and you can keep it and refer to it as many times as you would like. Now, for those uh, past lessons that I have done, I think so far I've done five past lessons and each lesson has two parts, one and two. So all these are recorded by the library and with the courtesy, they ex extended one copy to me and I have put it in my YouTube channel. So there are many ways to get this uh, video replay. One way is go to the post of the blog, find the link, YouTube link, click on it, you will get a repeat of the broadcast that we have done on the actual day minus the Q&A. So we have Windows 10, housekeeping, Grab app for, for ordering food and all that, then Facebook. Then the last topic we did last month is cashless payment. So today we are doing cloud storage. So in cloud storage, the same thing, we have two parts. Part two will happen two weeks after today. So today, I try to concentrate on the awareness of what is the meaning of cloud storage and why we do cloud storage and which is a safe way or better way of storing our memories. As long as you believe that a smart device is not a storage device, then you will understand better as I talk along. So a smartphone, a laptop is not a storage device. These are called operational device. It only helps you to connect to the internet, to send email, to receive email, to see YouTube and all these things. But for whatever reason, you have stored some pictures inside. My policy is, or my suggestion is, if you have more than 300 photos, start to take action to think of how to transfer them out of your smart device. It can be your phone, it can be your laptop. And there are many ways to do it. I can also show you because there are many of those people who join my WhatsApp interest group and start telling me they have more than a thousand pictures in their smartphone and their smartphone is not working, what shall I do? I say, sorry, I can't do anything for you because I don't have the proper program to extract your thing. But you go to Simlin, maybe they can do for you, but at a cost. But why you go to all this trouble and not believing in me to tell you do something as simple as less than five minutes to transfer your 1000 picture to an external device. So all the options available, I will start to make aware to you all today. And all the storage media also. 
when we talk about cloud storage, we have to understand the means. The means mean how, which is the best method, which is the most secure method. That's the means. And the consequences. Consequences are what happens if I don't do it? What happens I don't believe? I do another method. There are so many methods. So I tell you some method, you don't believe, you do some other method. So what are the consequences? As long as you know the consequences, you know the risk, yes, you can choose any option you want. That is your choice. But once you start to lose valuable memorial type of photos, it's too late to regret. Storage concentrate on holding the data while security concentrate on protecting your data. So both address the needs and the concern. So I hope you understand this. Huh? If you don't understand during Q&A, you can ask me more detail. This one is in the notes. You can read it later. But basically just to give you some guideline your thought and the recommendation action. So your thought, just to leave it in the smartphone, don't care, just leave it in the smartphone. But the recommendation is, please transfer them out if you have more than 300. So that is how you should read this table. So upload to web account, not recommended. If you want to understand why, you can ask me. Basically, I just want to make you aware what is good, what is no good. So if you read any of these, you are interested in it, but I say something that you don't agree or you don't understand, ask. Now, cloud storage is not really storing in the cloud. I hope you understand that. Huh? The cloud is just water vapor. After it goes up, it will come down. Cloud storage is like that. Many, many cubicles. But one very interesting question I would like to ask you all. Why cloud storage computer are not suitable to be located in Singapore? Think about it. During Q&A, you can ask me. In the housekeeping session, I already did give you the answer. Computer, the side effect or the enemy of computer is heat. When you want the computer to work, if you want the computer to work faster, the faster it is, the more heat it will generate. It's something like you eat medicine. Eh? The stronger the medicine, the stronger is the side effect. It's the same argument. So if you have cloud storage in Singapore, and Singapore is a tropic country, that means whoever who invests in this storage has to invest in another energy. That is electrical energy. Because you need electricity to air con the whole room 24-7. You just see how much money the owner of this uh, storage equipment have to pay. They are not stupid people. So what they do is, they locate all these uh, cloud storage computers in island, I-R-E island, okay? Uh, next to uh, UK. All the tropic country, tropical country, tropics country, because their climate is cooler. Yes, they have summer, but their summer are not so hot and uh, humid as we have. Water is also another enemy of uh, computer. Water can change the water paper, vapor. Water vapor can do a lot of funny things to the computer circuit. So, so if you go to the tropic country, it's much better to maintain the computer in a better way and less uh, trouble, less maintenance. Now, before cloud computing, how do we store our memories? For those who are of age, you will understand that we use tapes. We use films. We even use paper. You have cabinet and cabinet of paper. And with paper, with frames, you have micro frames. 
that are all the things we use, but now it's considered obsolete because everything is digitized now. From now on, I'm showing you all the hardware that is designed for storage. As the years go by, things start to get improved better and better, smaller and smaller, cheaper and cheaper. This is a hard disk that we normally use in a desktop computer. They got different capacity. Now, if you want to buy a a hard disk, you go to a shop and say, I want to buy a 1 TB hard disk, they will say, sorry, no more. Now minimum you have to buy is 2 TB. In the olden days, you know what we buy? We buy 250 Mac, 500 Mac. That's what we are talking about. But now there's no such thing. In Singapore context, I'm talking about. Minimum is 2 TB, 2 terabyte, 2,000 gigabyte, I think. So this is a good storage uh, media. You use it as a slave. Yeah, for one more thing I forgot to tell you. This internal hard disk is actually rotating at about 7,200 rounds per minute. So there has moving parts. And when everything, anything that moves is always time for trouble. So it's not so secure in that sense. This is also a hard drive, but this is called a solid state hard drive. There's no moving part. You see the black black thing down there, everyone is a chip that has a certain memory size inside. This is already outdated. This is just a table to show you the conventional hard drive, the solid state hard drive. The, the, the third column also solid state hard drive. It is a different uh, uh, solid state hybrid hard drive. The other one is solid state drive. So here they tell you all the advantages and disadvantages. Definitely the solid state one gives you better reliability. They call it durability, reliability, okay, always better. Capacity is, we are talking about this comparison is more than five years ago. So now the situation may change a bit, but it just give you a rough idea. What is the difference between the different design of hard disk? Now, I have put all the hard disk available in the market now to show you how improvement has been made. Now, if you want to get a hard disk to install your operating system, you can still go for the first one, hard disk SATA or SATA. But if you want to do a game machine, normally people buy the M2 SATA. You see the difference? One has a moving part, one does not have a moving part. The second one is considered obsolete at today's standard because it's cheaper to buy the third one than to buy the second one. But it's more expensive to buy the third one compared to the first one. But the, first, the third one is more reliable than the first one. The fourth one is similar to the third one, but it's a different design, different formation. So, if you want to assemble a PC, I will teach uh, next year, you no need to buy the first one. You can straight away buy the third one. It comes in 128, 256, and depends on. And basically all you need is make sure it has enough memory to contain the window 10. 128 is more than enough to contain the window 10. But if you want to have some flexibility, you can get 256. So now the combination is like that. If you build a PC, normally people buy the third one to install the operating system. And buy the first one as a temporary storage area. 
You can buy more. You can buy second, third, fourth, you can buy. It's up to you. But all the controlling function is all done by the third one. That means the CPU, the computer, will talk to the third one. You don't talk to the first one. First one is purely just a storing room to store whatever you want to store. So that is the pattern now to, to assemble any uh, desktop PC. Most of you are familiar with this, especially for those who are not so technically minded. It's very simple. You just buy it. It's a moving part. Huh? It has moving part inside. Yeah? You just plug it to a USB socket and you can transfer anything from your, your desktop or laptop to this place. So this is one of the options for you to transfer all your pictures to another equipment. So that means you have two copies. You have one copy in the, in the desktop. You have one copy in this uh, detachable external drive. But the question to ask is, is it reliable? How, how you consider your photos, how important they are. So all this can be discussed later. This is called an Apple Time Machine. If you are a person or if your children or grandchildren is studying university, most of them buy Apple laptop. So if they buy Apple laptop, it's like husband and wife. I will recommend them to buy this. Because this Apple Time Machine is designed 100% to match with their Apple laptop. So whatever your children or grandchildren do in the university, writing a thesis or whatever it is, one copy is in the laptop, one copy is automatically in the time machine. So if anything go wrong with the laptop, the copy is in the time machine, including the operating system. You just press a button, you will transfer everything back. Nothing is lost. The only thing that is lost is the time between your next update. Because you still have to manually do the update. That means that maybe once a week or once in two days, depends on how important you have just done the work. Then you press a button, then just leave them alone. They will talk to each other and it will be properly back up to the time machine. If you use a PC, there are other means. But I was told this time machine can also work on PC, but it's not recommended. This is what I'm talking about. If you are doing very important work or if you are a, a property agent that you kept a lot of uh, condo unit pictures and everything in and always bring your laptop to show your customer what you have for sale, uh, which uh, owner give you permission to sell their flats for them, you keep everything inside. It's good to keep a copy in the Apple Time capsule because that is your bread and butter. So if you, for whatever reason, you lost your laptop or, or whatever, something happened, all you need is to buy a new laptop and just tell your time machine to transfer everything back to the laptop. So people who are doing important work, it's always recommended to have this system of backup. Definitely, as I told you, there are other methods, like just now the external drive or even thumb drive, if you think that that is what you think is enough for you, it's okay. It's not a problem. I'm just giving you my views that that is normally what people do. Lah, okay? This is the one that just now I mentioned to you. If you have a PC or if you have a small office with a lot of logistics, that is what they do. But there are other methods also, but I'm saying that if you don't want to involve too many companies to help you to store your information, you can just go to Simlim and buy this method. They call it the Network Attached Storage, NAS. If you go to Simlim, you tell them they will know how to sell you the thing. And you can put four hard disks inside this black box and uh, they have a way of internal backup each, uh, back each other. That means uh, 
this one may back up these two, this three may back up these four, or something like that. You can do any configuration you like. But it has a disadvantage. The disadvantage is it has a small motherboard. Actually, I make this mistake. I bought two of these. And one day, the motherboard failed. I went back to the distributor and tell them I, I want to repair this motherboard. They told me, Uncle, this model already obsolete. We don't have the motherboard anymore. Then I say, huh? This is supposed to be backup equipment. And you are telling me now you cannot repair or even replace my motherboard. Then what happened to all my information inside the hard disk? You cannot literally bring the hard disk and go to the PC, put a slave and uh, get the picture out. Because they are coded in such a way, only the motherboard understands what is stored in these four uh, uh, hard disks. So after that, I lost more than $900 because one set is about $450. So you see, I learned by mistakes. So this method is good as long as the motherboard is working well, as long as the distributors support your motherboard. If for whatever reason they say that this series is obsolete, no more support, then you better do something to whatever they store inside the hard disk. As I said, there are, any, there are more other methods of doing things. I'm just describing to you what mistake I make and how much I lost and I learned the hard way. So after learning the hard way, I get fed up. I, in, I assemble my own home cloud. You see the hard disk down there? It's similar to what you see in the black box. But the difference is, this motherboard that I use is a generic motherboard. Generic means common to any brand. Any brand means any factory can manufacture the motherboard and still can talk to the hard disk. That is the meaning of generic. So I have even done one-to-one -one redundancy. The total cost of this whole box cost me, no, sorry, the four hard disks alone cost me 2000 At that time, now it's very cheap. So including the, the motherboard may be about 3000 So this home cloud I have done for myself, it's still working at home now, is about $3,000. That means any picture in any of the hard disks, for whatever reason it failed, say for example one hard disk failed, no problem. I have a mirror image of that hard disk so that I can buy a new hard disk using the motherboard. I can transfer the similar set as a mirror image to the new hard disk. If my motherboard fail, no problem. I can go and buy another brand, or assuming this motherboard is obsolete, I can buy another uh, motherboard and the hard disk still can talk to the motherboard. So that is the meaning of if something happened, what is the consequence? So we have to study all this in order to make your decision. But as I say, this is also one of the methods. There are many other methods as I go along. Very simple. You can store your memory and photos in your laptop, as I told you just now. You can store everything in your smartphone, as I said. But what happened one day, the smartphone refused to work or your laptop refused to work? What are the consequences? Do you have any memorable pictures in the smartphone or in your laptop that die die, you must get it? Ah, then you have to think about how to back up. Lah. Okay. This is a very easy way to back up your thing, a thumb drive. They, got many, uh, they have many uh, memory size, 32, 64. Or even you can burn it on a uh, compact disc. It's still available now. But the disadvantage is you must buy a burning program. In the old days, they give you a burning program when you buy a CD-ROM. But nowadays, everybody try to cut corners. You don't get it. A proper burning program I bought 
cost me about $200. So with that burning program, I can burn any CD that is playable on any DVD player. No need a computer. Sometimes you burn the information in the DVD, but they can only play it on the computer. It cannot play it on the DVD player. That's why a lot of people don't understand all this. If you buy a proper program, you can configure it to play even on a simple DVD player. One of the session, one of the participants asked me about this. So this session, I show it to you. Say, so why so troublesome? Get this, get that. Why not I get this a photo stick so simple? Just plug it in, zoom everything from the smartphone, 1,000 picture will be just captured by this uh, magic stick. Yes, very simple. But do you know that this stick requires a dedicated app to work? That means you have to download the app. So if this uh, stick belongs to ABC company, they have a name for their app. So you go to the app market and download ABC app. Normally it's free right, because you, you have already committed on a certain uh, business with them. Okay. But the question is, what happened? Your Apple phone start to up, update the operating system. Sometimes when they update, your app go obsolete because they can't talk to each other. Because somebody already updated, then the, the, the programming code come here, they just get lost, they don't understand. So that means you cannot retrieve anymore, you cannot see anymore. Unless the ABC company who, who sell you this uh, stick also update their app so that it's compatible with what Apple has updated. Or for the, the Google OS, the Android OS. So the Google must update the app and the company that sell this stick must also update the app to suit the Google operating system. That's okay. But what happens if this company get bankrupt? Where do you get the app? So where is your memory? So your memory is uh, nobody can help you because nobody knows the code how to decipher to bring your picture out. So these are the consequences. Very convenient. But the consequence is, if the provider don't support what you have purchased, I'm not talking about one or two years. Uh, I'm talking about maybe five to 10 years. Uh, we are talking about memories that have to keep for life. Uh. So you think of all the consequences. So may not be also a good option. Better options are coming. Now, in Windows 10, they have given two ways of transferring your photo from your smartphone to the laptop or desktop. That is a temporary storage. Eh? From there, you have to transfer somewhere else eh? without doing anything. Just use the cable that they provide you when you buy the smartphone. Normally, one side is connected to the smartphone. The other side is a USB uh, plug. You plug to the laptop or desktop. Just that. And you can transfer everything from your smart device to the laptop or desktop. But don't be too ambitious. For those who have listened to my talk last time on housekeeping, I have said I make a $600 mistake. Why? Because my daughter gave me a laptop that has more than, I think about 2,000 to 3,000 pictures inside and asked me to transfer it out to a hard disk. I get a bit ambitious. I one shot command it to transfer more than a thousand picture. Try to be lazy. Lah. I don't know what happened. My RAM got uh, spoiled. Sorry, Mr. Ho. Yeah. I think we lost the slides that you're referring to. Can you share it again? Oh, yes. What happened? I, I think maybe, yeah. Can you just wait share la. again? So wait, 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 wait.
Okay. You see okay now? Yes, we can see now. Okay, I go back to uh, up to okay. Uh yeah, I was saying that uh if you have window 10 laptop or desktop, there are two simple way of transferring your photos and document from a smartphone and uh to a laptop or desktop by using the cable that they provide you when you first buy the, the smartphone. The USB end just connect to any USB on the laptop and uh, the desktop. But I make a mistake, as I say, one time I tried to be too ambitious. I command the computer to transfer more than a thousand pictures at one go. Somehow that I don't understand, it spoil my RAM, my Apple RAM. So when I bring to Simlim and ask them to replace it, they said they are uh, imitation one and original one. I say I want original one, how much you say $600. So I have no choice. I just bite the bullet and have to pay $600. And that is the same computer I'm using now. So sometimes you make mistakes to learn. So this method all can be found in the lesson on housekeeping. You just go to my blog and just view the video. You will learn how to do it. But maybe part two, I will repeat it again. So here I'm saying, don't be ambitious. Start small. Start with maybe 20, 30. And once you get the hang of it, increase to 50. But try not to go more than 100. Unless you want to take risks as what I done last time. So that is my recommendation. And worst of all, if your laptop is not powerful. Not powerful means uh, uh, when you buy the time, you didn't pay a lot of money to upgrade the RAM. Uh, maybe you only have 8, 8, 8 G RAM or, or things like that. It, it may be a problem if you even do 100. So all these things, you have to learn what you have. What type of laptop you have or what type of desktop you have. But trying less than 100 should be quite safe. Uh. Now, some people try to save even the last dollar and refuse to pay money. Yes, you can. You can put your memory in Facebook. They don't delete for you. You can put memory in Flickr. You have to pay this one. Dropbox, Google Drive, they give you some free storage. More you pay. YouTube for videos. So far, never say pay. But now they try to ask you to go for premium. You have to pay. Lah. But you don't go, you still can store video inside. Personal website, all this you remember just now I told you the, the, the table, uh, it's the same thing. What I am talking now is exactly the same what I say in the, in the table there. So a personal website, not recommended to store picture inside. A personal blog, also not recommended. A photo album, maybe can, but photo album got many types. Some are free, some are payable. So all this you have to judge and decide yourself. For me, my children has uh, subscribed to Flickr. Flickr is a company specialized in storing pictures, but they can also store documents and even videos, but on a limited capacity, not very large video. And uh, I'm not sure how much, but I think we, we pay about $60 a year. The amount is unlimited. So at this moment of time, all my children passed the photo album to me, you know, the old-fashioned paper photos. Uh, and I have to scan it. I have a scanner. I have scanned it and upload it album by album. At this moment, my Flickr has more than 13,000, one tree, 13,000 pictures inside. And it's very easy to retrieve to see. Just use the smartphone, you can see. I can demonstrate this uh, either today or in the next lesson, to show you how easy it can be done. If you want to try out this, Flickr allow you to try out by not having more than a thousand pictures. You can try out, but once you do more than that, you have to pay. Cloud storage can be accessed by only two information. One is your email address, second one is your password. Username is normally your email address. So you can, you can join any cloud company. You can join uh, Google, 
Apple, Microsoft, or just now I told you the one Flickr. Different company has different uh, business model. You just see which one you like and you stick to it and focus on it and keep on uploading all your precious photo in it. Now you remember, just now I told you I make my home cloud. Uh, so how do I back up my information? What I did is the sequence of event I'm talking now. Uh, from the album, paper photo, I scan to a digital image. It come out. I use a software to, to uh, improve it a bit. I use Photoshop to improve it a bit. Then after that, I upload to my home cloud. Then for my home cloud, I upload to Flickr cloud account. So actually what happened? Actually, I have a working copy in my desktop that is connected to the scanner. That's one copy. Then internally, by the internal network, it transferred to my cloud machine. The cloud machine is also within the house. So it's the internal network. So I have a copy in the cloud machine. And the cloud machine, just now I remember I told you one-to-one -one redundancy. Because actually, there are two copies in the cloud machine. Then I upload to Flickr. Upload to Flickr is also considered storage but more for retriever, for, for people who, for my children who will live around the world to access to it and see their childhood photos and all that thing. So that is how. So technically, I have three reliable copy. One in the cloud, two in my uh, cloud home machine, and one working copy that is in my working computer that is not so important. So they are all of the same resolution. When you paid a cloud, account, they don't reduce your resolution. But you keep in Google, they reduce your resolution because it's a free one. They can't allow you to keep very large uh, photo uh, re resolution. So simply put it, your data is actually in somebody's computer, not in the cloud. And the computer, as I told you, we don't know where they are. All depends on the company. Like Flickr, maybe it's in uh, US, in the cooler part of US, maybe. Or maybe they find the labor cost in US is too expensive. They may put in some other country who, who don't have so much, uh, uh, you can say the tax benefit, uh, maybe better. So maybe they put in Ireland or what, I don't know. I'm not a businessman. I don't know what is the best option to do. So they also know how to save money. So advantages of uh, cloud storage, your data is secure, no worries of losing them. Even you lose your smartphone, doesn't matter. Even your computer crash also doesn't matter. So the disadvantage is definitely you don't store sensitive information inside. Lah. So that means uh, in my home cloud, uh, I don't 100% put everything to the cloud. Maybe I put 98%. 2% that are too sensitive, I still keep in my home cloud that has a one-to-one -one backing. Because once you put in the cloud, you have no control. Somebody is controlling your information. No doubt they promise you they won't do anything and all that, but that is their promise. So that is a disadvantage. And also you require some money, like you have to pay them some money for the service. Murphy's Law is to just to remind you that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So these are the, there are only some of them here I put down here, but these are the popular ones. As I told you, some of them give you initially free a certain quantity. So you can try them out. So I tried the flicker, the, the icon is there. Now, if you put your data information in the cloud provider, they only allow playback on a certain format. Say for example, you put a video in the ABC uh, cloud company and you try to directly play back online. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you cannot. So you have to read carefully their, their instruction of what can be done. So if you think that you want to play directly online, your, your video that is stored there, try to do in a format 
that is suitable to what they ask you to do. So common format is MP4 for video, MP3 for music. But sometimes WAV music is uh, sounds better. So you can store there, but you may not be able to play back. You have to download the song to your laptop, then you can play. So these are the inconvenience you have to understand. At home, you can download this a VLAN player. This VLAN player is a free app. It's very useful. It can play most of the format. Locally, eh, not in your cloud. Eh. You, can, you cannot install this in the cloud machine eh, because the cloud machine, the computer don't belong to you. But in your laptop and desktop, you can download this. And uh, any of your friends send you any video in any format, most likely it can be played back. 